Hello, my name is Anna Gregory and I teach bilingual kids and also educate parents uh, and teachers who want to follow British curriculum. And one of the most exciting topics, uh, as people say, is spelling, because I think because that's because of the massive difference between how they uh, do that in Russia and how they do that in the UK. Uh, the difference is really, really big and uh, I really would love you to uh, look into it and maybe you uh, find something that would work in your classroom. So uh, or one of the differences is that we teach spelling from the very first day. Uh, and uh, we also uh, teach uh, spelling and it's not uh, um, like topic based. So basically in what they do in Russia, my kid, uh, for example, in his school, in, um, because he also follows Russian curriculum, he comes home and today he needs to learn like eight words and they're all colors. Uh, the next uh, week he comes and uh, that's a playground topic. So a ball, doll, um, um, slides and uh, some other words that kids probably and playground. Uh, yeah, and uh, then uh, the next week it's something different like days of the week. And uh, uh, to, uh, to me now, this all looks very messy because in the UK, uh, what they do is they teach spelling, but it's based on the sounds that they already know and they can spell them. I will just try to show you uh, and ex explain what I mean. So uh, spelling starts when the kids, when they are like around four, because that's reception year. Reception is like a phase between nursery and year one. Uh, and uh, kids uh, uh, start doing phonics. Uh, uh, there are six stages, but reception is two, three and four. Basically, it's not only reading, they learn not only to read, but at the same time spell. Because what we do at like the first week of phonics is, oh, this sounds uh, s, a, t, p. So day one, s. I introduce them uh, to this sound. I say, okay, this is s, s. That's how we uh, uh, look at it, that's s. So they need to recognize it and they need to be able to produce it. So, so, so right, correct. Now, now we need to learn how to write it. So they, they practice, they practice, they practice. Then the next day we have A. Yeah, I show, I show them the letter. I don't say that it's A, no, it's A, A. They learn it. We now, it's like only day, too, yeah, but we can already spell a word, but it's as. Uh, then we have t, t. We'll learn this letter and the sound t, and then we can uh, spell sat. So a lot of times we do robot talk. So what it is, is I say a word, sat. And the kid should be able to break it into uh, sounds. S, A, T. And a lot of teachers in Russia know how to use it. Because, uh, it's called blending, yeah? When, it's the, uh, when they're teaching reading. So they say S, A, T. And kids learn to make it sat. But we also can use it for spelling. Because when my kids are uh, writing something and they are like, mom, how do I spell it? I say, okay, just, just say it, say it again and again. And break this word down, robotock it, and you will be able to spell it. And they do, for example, pat, so pat, p, a, t, and they start doing that, p, a, t, pat. So uh, they, uh, like when it's uh, week two, only 14 days into learning all that, they can already spell a lot of words. And that's what we teach them. Think, spell, not learn. We also learn uh, some words by heart, but there are common exception words. And there are just a couple of hundreds now of them 
uh, not uh, like in Russia when uh, you need to you have a list and you always uh, write, copy, write, 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 and then you one day might know how to spell mother. Uh, for that, we always have rules. So I will show you a few rules. Uh, so you just uh, know how it's done. And uh, here's just a list um, of rules for year one. As you can say, it's 115 pages in my workbook that I was doing for my course for teachers. So here we go. Term 1A, example, week one. Yeah. And by this time, kids already know it's um, year one. So now kids are five. Yeah, they already know these sounds. O, A, E, E. They know how to spell them. They know basically how to spell P and S, N, M, H, L. They know that. What they don't know is why we have double double consonant. And here I explain, so if the word is short, and if the vowel is short, like in off, 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 it's short, and it's a one beat word, off, one syllable, puff, one syllable, then we need to cop, um, double the consonant. And here's the thing, so they don't try to learn this list of words, what, six words? No, they try to learn the rule. So next time they hear a word, they need to spell a word that is not here, but it has a um, f, s, and the word is short. They will know that they need a double uh, consonant. This rule is, by the way, called floss rule. It's f, l, s. If we have these sounds at the end of the word, we need to double them. Uh, then uh, we have some practice. Uh, and here, uh, I exactly have some exception words. So we have just a couple of dozens for a year. And it's not a lot for kids. They just need to know that if, us, bus, yes, these words, they don't follow this rule, they're exceptions. And we need to just know that we need only one consonant. So you see, it's easier uh, to uh, practice when you have only actually four words to learn, only four. And, with, uh, and knowing this rule, you can spell hundreds. Even if you, it's the first time you spell it, you still know how. For example, uh, and what we do is we show them this power. So that's motivation. We don't, uh, um, oh, uh, we don't uh, like punish them. We don't tell them off for making mistakes. But when we are discussing something, let's um, say we're discussing some games and they say, oh, we played chess. So, oh, come on. I think you know how to spell chess. Let's do that. And I take like this, uh, and say, come on, let's let's do that. Ch, ch, chess. And they say, oh, no, I can't. No, you can. You can spell that. Come on. Chess, ch, ch. What can you hear? Ch, chess. And they say, I can hear ch, ch. And how do we spell ch? That's how, correct. Chess, chess. What sound can you hear? It's ear, ear as in less, bed, pet, chess. Yeah, the same sound. So it's an ear, chess, chess. And they put, for example, only once. They say, aha, but you remember we had this row. The word is one syllable, chess. The vowel is short, ear. Yeah, so what happens to the consonant? And you know, oh yeah, okay, we need to double it. Chess. And the more you do that, the better they get. 
and then they just start doing the same. So without my help, but they are writing something like, oh, uh, <laughs> Cliff, for example, that's a name, Cliff. And they need to spell it and that cl, cl, aha. Uh -huh. Most times it's not cl like that, not kicking cl. No, usually the cluster is cl. That's the cluster. That is very uh, possible to say. Yeah, cliff, e, cliff, e, e. Well, but this one, cliff, uh -huh. and they will talk themselves through it. They will say, cliff is a short word. That's why we need double foot. That's a floss rule. They just know that. Knowing the, uh, the rule, they can spell hundreds hundreds and thousands of words and um, my job is to give them to let them know that they have this power to show them why exactly they are doing that that it can help them that they won't need to learn thousands of words from the dictionary i i show them exactly that there are uh, sorry that there are a few words here that are called common exception words that they need to learn. They must, they have to, but there are only four of them for this week, only four. Now well, just imagine girls, um, a native speaker whose English is brilliant, who's very comfortable in his own skin and comes home and home task for, for the week is to learn only four words. And what happens to this Russian girl, uh, girl or boy who comes home, who can hardly speak, and they have like 10 words that don't make sense? They're just like these letters together in the word um, mother. They are like, uh, like, like, I don't know, maybe a phone number to me. Yeah, that's why we have the old days like Kukumbir and Mothir because they are just assorted letters and they need to memorize uh -huh, mm -hmm, and then comes this and then and then this. So uh, it makes their lives very difficult uh, because the workload is massive. And just think about it, that a kid, a native speaker who knows already all these words, it's not a problem for them. They have to do only four a week. And a Russian kid who has English only like twice a week. <clears throat> yeah, so basically it's what, 90 minutes. And they need to learn so many, so many things. So I think that uh, it's a, a very demotivating thing. Oh, you can talk a lot about how to make them happy. But I think that that really makes them happy when they know that they have this power when they know the rule and they can spell so many things that they, oh, they, they don't even know the meanings of the words. <clears throat> oh, by the way, this uh, is also used quite a lot uh, in the UK. So we spell and we read uh, words that are alien words, that are not real words. And we can see these uh, tasks in uh, uh, different tests. Uh, when uh, kids need to like read words and uh, th these words don't exist in the language. Why they do that is uh, to prevent uh, kids from uh, learning by heart. So no drilling. If your kid uh, wrote the word chess 500 times and now knows how to spell it, it won't help him long term. That's why they introduce a lot of Mm, tasks with alien words like in any book in any book we have my children have or I also have a course for for teach uh, for, for children and they are in lots of words are alien so they don't exist in the language because we need to teach them the rule not to learn the words but to teach the rule that's the difference so while we have a little bit of time i will show you a few more words oh that's how we uh, by the way that's how we learn words so we uh explain the rule and then i say okay we have on the word chess what i do is that you need to look look mm -hmm. look uh 
here I need to put chess. So chess, the cake looks chess. Okay, now we cover it and we write it. So how you remember that? Chess, okay, check, tick. And that's uh, here, I don't have any words here. You need to put whatever you're practicing. I was just um, with this table showing <clears throat> the teachers how to use the table. Yeah, so you, uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and uh, yep, uh, here, and go on. That was Flostrel. I'm just trying to find the next one. Yeah, the next one uh, is uh, dictation. That's how we dictate the words. So that's teacher's copy. It's always, always this how. So I say, the word is off. And then I say the sentence, I turn the lights off. Then I get, say again, the word is off. And that's what the kids say. I turn the light off, and they need to put only off, yeah, in the sentence. Never ever anyone asks them to spell the word light or turn the light off as a phrase, yeah, because how do they know how to spell turn? Again, it's demotivating. Don't scare them off. Uh, you need to make them spell only the things that you taught them to spell. Not some crazy things like light, for example, at this point. We don't need that at all. We don't care about those words. Uh, then uh, we have the next. <clears throat> I'm scrambling sentences. Hang on. Week three, for example. And we here learn how to spell ing, yeah, hunting. Uh, look at the words, hunt, so we don't need to teach them how to spell hunt, because they just know that, it's obvious, hunt, 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 h, h, r, they know that r is this one, n, t, and then we only teach them how to spell ing, hunting, or hunted, that whatever it is, how or you can you you know you can read it t or id, yeah, but it still will be these two. So uh, the suffix, how to spell suffixes. Or the word, for example, cracker, ah, uh, cracker, jumper. That's a suff the suffix that we are learning how to spell. But the word crack. Uh, it's also essay, and the kids usually know rules. So the cluster, first the cluster cr, cr, cr. They know uh, by this time that cr is usually not like that. No, it should be curly cr with an r, cr. That's the cluster that they already learned. Kraka, a, a, kra, a will be this one. Crack, crack. What we do here is we say, for example, if you're not sure how to spell it, get rid of the suffix. So put not cracker, but crack, crack, crack. The word is short, and the kid will say, if the word is short and we hear k, it will be this. Because that's the rule. The word is short, we need CK. Crack, and I say then, okay, and now you can just add the suffix. Cracker, how do we spell uh, this suffix? Ah, uh, and they know that it's this, because they know how to spell suffixes. You see, the same with buzzer. We usually say, get rid of the suffix first, spell buzz. And they are like b b b b b b a a a. That's how we spell a. Then the word is short, and if we hear z, we need to double it, and then we add the suffix buzzer. We get buzzer. <clears throat> Go 
got it. I think it's very exciting. It is. I did work. So uh, I will just tell you how it was with uh, my own kids. At first, like last, last year, it was harder. So we had to spend more time. And then they, when they get, when they actually understand what you want from them, they get it. They start learning these uh, rules and they start supplying them. They just know uh, them well, as profits, why they're doing that. And it gets very easy. On this, for example, bank. Also, uh, often kids don't know what to put, for example, k or k. But we learn it and we know that the cluster n k, n bank, bank is this. And they won't, they won't just spell it this way. They won't because they know that it's not how it works in the word. It should be n k. And uh, you say it uh, maybe the first year it's hard, but then when you already know so many rules, it gets easier and easier. And to just uh, see how easy it is, um, I think about your Russian language. Uh, because how were you when you went to school? What were you doing there? Learning the rules. And these rules um, now, maybe like 20 years after, they're still helping you. Yeah, because you learned zhi, shi, pi, shi, e. uh, and, and now when you're writing it, you know that, and it still clicks zhi, shi, or like uh, anything else. Yeah, you know that and it helps you. And you don't need to sit down, open the dictionary and start like and write it many, many times. You don't need that because you know that it's and you need this letter there. Absolutely the same with English. And that's how we do that. And that's how um, it makes spelling up. Uh, enjoyable even because um, it's just easy and it saves time you see uh, so now like uh, my students uh, they can read a book if they have an hour they can just read a book not spend it drilling the words uh, as it is for us now a waste of time uh, because we are learning it uh, this way. All right, so hope I wasn't too boring. Uh, see you later. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.